Hello, and today I will tell you about the water cycle. Short answer, the water cycle is a cycle that goes around and around of the water. First is, there are three states of the water, gas, liquid, and solid. First off is, the water heat from the sun boils it and water vapor goes up, forming to the cloud and then rains down. This repeat. That is the short answer. But for a more detailed answer, we will go much deeper. So where is Earth's water? It can be found everywhere, even underground, ice, and in mountains. 96.5% of Earth's water are oceans. That's where animals live. 1.5% is in polar ice caps, glaciers, and permanent snow. 1.7% is in lakes, rivers, streams, and soil. 0.001 is in water vapor in Earth's atmosphere. On Earth, you can find water in all three states of matter, solid, liquid, and glass, and gas. These are the main three. Solid is an example, ice, and liquid is water that we drink, we use to bathe, or we use to swim in. Gas is where boiling water comes, water vapor. Liquid water is found in Earth's ocean, rivers, lakes, streams, and even in the soil and underground. Solid ice is found in glaciers, snow, and ice. Also in the North and South Poles, water vapor, a gas, is found in Earth's atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere is very moisture because it is full with water molecules, which is water vapor. So the water vapors will go like this. First off is we have the sea. The sea is the storage. The storage of the water then be heated up by the sun. When it is heated up, it will turn into water vapor. It changes its state into gases. This will be called eva evaporation, where water vapor comes up. When those water vapors come up, where it is so cold, it freeze together and turn into a cloud. Then this will be called precipitation. No, not precipitation but it will turn into a cloud. Yes, now you will know what I am talking about. Those clouds will then be now so heavy it will rain down. Now this is precipitation. Precipitation is when water comes down to the sea and evaporation is when sea come up. Water storage is found in fresh water in lakes and river groundwater, soil moisture, sea level, water storage in oceans, ice sheets, and also fresh, fresh water in glaciers and snow. The flow on the water cycle is the surface runoff, which is the river or the stream. And when precipitation, that's also the flow of water, also evaporation. So now we will talk again. The sun's heat causes glaciers and snow to melt into liquid water. This water goes into oceans, lakes, and streams. Water from melting snows and ice also goes into the soil. There, it supplies water for plants and the groundwater that we drink. How does water get into the atmosphere? There are two main ways this happens. Heat from the sun causes the water to evaporate from the oceans, lakes, and streams. Evaporation occurs when liquid water on Earth's surface turns into water vapor and into our atmosphere. Water from plants and trees also enters the atmosphere. This is called transpi transpi transpiration. This is when the water from plants enters into the atmosphere. It's when the water inside the plant or moisture from the soil evaporates. 
When it evaporates, it will call transpiration. Warm water vapor rises up through Earth's atmosphere. As the water vapor rises higher and higher, the cool air of the atmosphere causes the water vapor to turn back into liquid water, creating clouds. This process is called condensation. Condensed. You can remember this by condensation, about the word condensed. Think of it getting denser and denser. The sun hits closer sky. Next is when a cloud becomes full of liquid water. It falls from the sky as what rain or snow, also known as precipitation. That is when the rain comes down. It can be made in a state of rain, hail, snow, or other kinds. Rain and snow then fill lakes and streams, and the process starts all over again. This is why we call a cycle. It goes all over and over. So why do we have to care about the water cycle? Most people ask. We care about the water cycle because water is necessary for all living things. NASA satellites orbiting Earth right now are helping us to understand what is happening with water on our planet. There are different kinds of water in different places. There are water in the soil, humans need water to drink. And water the plants that grow our food, NASA has a satellite called SMAP, SMAP, short for Soil Moisture Active Passive. That measures how much water is in the top 2 inches, 5 centimeters of Earth's soil. This can help us understand the relationship between water in the soil and oh, surf weather conditions, here. such as droughts. Water in the Mom. atmosphere. NASA's CloudSat mission studies water in our atmosphere in the form of clouds. Joy. CloudSat gathers information about clouds and yeah. how they play a role in Earth's climate. Also, the international satellite called Global Precipitation Measurements Mission or GPM <coughs> observe when <coughs> observe when, where and how much it rains and snows on Earth. Water in the oceans. As Earth's climates become warmer, land ice at the north and south poles starts melting. The water then flows into the ocean causing sea level to rise. All of this is from NASA. Water in soil, water in the atmosphere, water everywhere are measured using the satellites. NAPQAS, NASA's Aqua satellite also collects a large amount of information about Earth's water cycle, including water in the oceans, clouds, sea ice, land ice, and snow clouds. So these are all of the information about the water cycle, detailed and most information. There are also some more facts about NASA that I have told you recently. So that's it for today. I'll tell you, I have tell you about the Earth's water cycle. So goodbye.